Oh, hi there. I'm the Nashorn. It means rhinoceros in German. Um, yeah, no, no. N oh, hello there. Hi. Glad you could say hello. Well, I've got some exclusive footage of yours truly coming up in just a bit. But we'll, we'll talk a little bit later. It's a pleasure to meet your acquaintance. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once I saw that, I firmly believe it can never be unseen. That little face was just hilarious. Like, this is a, a very impressive looking tank destroyer, <laughs> but that little, the little robot face on the front is just, it's just hilarious. So we're going to be talking about the Nashorn, which means rhinoceros. It's armed with a Pac-43 88 millimeter main gun, which is impressive. And there's a few interesting features about the Nashorn um, that will make it a lot of fun in regular battles and custom battles, and as well as like a pretty uh, capable sniper. But it will be relatively weakly armed. So, and we'll be talking about the 88 millimeter Pack 43, right? So let's look at the German Rhinoceros or the Nashorn. Now it's a mobile tank destroyer. It was an, originally called the Hornis, which means Hornet. Um, that one's a lot easier to translate <laughs> than uh, Nashorn. Um, but but the SDKFC 164 Nashorn is a continuation of the German idea of self-propelled guns with an open cabin that were designed to destroy enemy tanks from ambush and camouflage positions. This time, the engineers created a unified self-propelled gun carriage based on the Panzerkampfwagen 3 and 4 and equipped it with a lightly armored cabin, so it's not a casemate style tank destroyer like our beloved Hetzer or the Jagdpanzer IV, but this is open turreted and a rather high silhouette relative to those two tank destroyers themselves. So the chief advantage of this self-propelled gun, see this, it's not a true tank destroyer by nature, it's technically a SPG, but the true advantage here was the famous 88 millimeter Pac-43 cannon which could basically destroy any Soviet or Allied tank of the time from the front at extreme distance. So that being said, lining up an enemy target and firing down range, you're going to be able to knock them out relatively easy. The trade-off is you yourself are not going to be as easily concealable relative to some of the other tank destroyers like the Jagdpanzer IV or the Flatpanzer or the Hetzer. Right? So there's a trade off. You could almost call this thing a glass cannon. But whereas, like, the Panzer IV F2 is considered a glass cannon because it's got an amazing gun, but relative it's, to its battle rating, almost anything else can pen it with ease. The difference there is that baby's got a turret, right? But this thing, obviously, is a tank destroyer, no turret. It does have a decent amount of um, gun traverse rate, and we'll go over that in a little bit. But one of the reasons that it was named the Hornet and then not named the Hornet was because we all know about the ME-410, the heavy fighter, well known to all of us, was called the Hornis. And um, now the Germans were like, you know what, we already have enough Hornets flying around. Let's pick something that's a little more fitting. So a big bulky tank destroyer with a giant horn in the middle, a rhinoceros a Nashorn, right? Now the cool thing about the Nashorn was that it first fought at Kursk. So, and while that was a loss for the Germans, it proved to be a pretty good testing grounds for the Nashorn. Um, it was relatively flat, there were extreme distances, and this thing just proved very, very capable of performing, it's just of performing its task. Basically, hello, there's a tank at extreme range. Let's shoot, let's pen it from the front, and let's knock it out. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how the Nashorn plays within War Thunder, because um, there's a few maps, like we do have the Kursk map, and there's a few other maps that are relatively big, but there's very few that um, are truly flat, other than maybe, say, Mozdok and Kursk being the two flattest and biggest of the maps, right? So as far as 
you know, really honing your skills as a German sniper will be uh, map, you know, map sensitive, right? So the Nashorn is famous representative of Germany's SPG line with an open cabin. The Nashorn self-propelled carriage was created by engineers from the Alkit Bonsgwald. <laughs> I don't know how my German pronunciation was there. And it later became the basis for the Hummel self-propelled gun. The chassis was built with components and units of the modified Panzerkampfwagen 3 and 4 tanks. And the most significant difference from the Panzer chassis was the increased length of the hull and the placement of the engine in the very center of this SPG. This was done to correct the vehicle's center of gravity, because you can imagine putting a Pack 43 on top of a Panzer chassis and kind of leaning it towards the rear, you would have to adjust where the engine was to correct that. So the thing wouldn't flip over or wouldn't have fear of any flippage once it fired. So this was done to correct the vehicle's center of gravity relative to the placement of the cannon. It is clearly noticeable on the model that the radiator grill is now located on the center of the hull. So when you look at the upper part of the SPG, you can see those radiator grills right there, right in the center. So if you're unfamiliar with the tank and you're flanking it from the side, you want to get an engine shot, look for those radiator grills and plug one right there and knock them out the box, Luke. So the crew compartment of the open cabin was designed for three crew members. The cabin also housed the Nashorn's ammunition complement of 40 shells. So it's a relatively exposed ammunition rack. Um, it's, uh, that being, you know, they, like I said, I mean, it's kind of just a very, very uh, glass cannon-esque tank destroyer. But I mean, what's interesting is it brings up this whole thought of like about SPGs, you know, like um, in other games like World of Tanks, SPGs are are very uh, mixed feelings on them. But there's a lot of really cool vehicles that are SPGs, and it would be it would still be interesting to see how SPGs would play in a game like War Thunder, and where you could avoid the mistakes that World of Tanks made, right? But anyway, moving on. See, because it's while it is technically an SPG, it's got a very very big um, high velocity 88 millimeter Pack 43. So it's, it's not necessarily a true artillery piece, right? But the 88 millimeter Pac-43 is one of the best guns that ever fired during the Second World War. And we all know it from the Tiger II, the Jag Panther, and the Ferdinand, different variations of the Pac-43. Um, it's incredibly accurate. Like we said, is a very, very long range. And it's a destructive weapon, just extremely destructive. I mean, if you can if you can drive out <clears throat> the Nashorn and pan almost anything from the front, truly, you're gonna you're gonna really really enjoy it. So let's see where this thing fits on the tech tree. Well, the Nashorn will appear in the game at rank three in the German tech tree. The weak armor of the cabin will require careful careful consideration when positioning and control over the situation on the battlefield. Any shell or an aerial cannon burst that lands in the cabin is almost guaranteed to deal critical damage or even destroy the SPG. So in realistic battles, um, any fighter that any fighter or attacker that's out of bombs or rockets sees one of these things, you can still use your machine guns and you might get yourself a Nash horn on the end of your tail there. So, just another kill to add to the list. So, I think that's kind of cool, and it does show that while you have one of the best guns for Tier 3, um, and one of the best chances for knocking out an enemy tank in one shot, almost regardless of where you hit, well, not that's not entirely true, but, like, the best chance at distance, it is kind of interesting that you can also get taken down by an enemy fighter firing simple machine guns. So... It's definitely a trade-off, and it kind of keeps the it kind of keeps the Nashorn from rolling out and mainly trying to play the sniper 
play the ambusher, play protected, playing safe. So, that being said, we'll go over the 88 millimeter pack 43. Now, what I'm interested in the Nashorn is when you look at the gun elevation. So the elevation of the 88 millimeter pack 43 was 38 degrees positive and negative five degrees. So while you don't have very good gun depression, um, when kind of hopping over a hill and trying to look down, you're actually very vulnerable right there. What does make this interesting is you're gonna be pretty capable when it comes time to firing an enemy aircraft. I mean, and your rate of fire is six to seven rounds per minute, plus it's an 88. And now I'm sure there's going to be people out there who are going to find this and hone that skill and start knocking planes out of the sky. I mean, we've seen some crazy things, crazy planes getting shot down out of the sky by like, like KV-2s and SPGs and tank destroyers, just like all kinds of stuff that never would have been intended to shoot at planes. So I think it's relatively, um, it's relatively reasonable that this thing would be pretty good at shooting down planes. And I think it would be a lot of fun to give it a go with that. So I think one of the, one of the areas that I really like about it is that 38 degrees of gun elevation. Now, What's enough, what, what else is pretty interesting is when you look at the effective firing range of 4,000 meters and the maximum firing range of 16,000 meters, there's, I don't think there's going to be too many maps that you're going to be hard pressed to be able to reach out and touch someone. The only thing that's really going to be holding you back is your own eyes and your own visibility because your gun can hit them, whereas maybe your eyes just can't see them. So that is another little bit of interesting facts on the Nashorn as well. So I have covered all of the different considerations about the Nashorn. Um, went over all the information they put in the dev blog, which is publicly available to all of us. But now it's time for the exclusive footage that I talked about on the Nashorn. So without further ado, let's check it out.
Oh, that's the T-44 carrying the secret documents for the T-44-100 and the T-34-100. We gotta burn those documents up. <laughs> 